Hello! If you're watching this video, you likely have already designed your home page and thought a little bit about how you'd like your students to navigate through your Canvas to access digital materials throughout the year. In this section, the first video, I will take you through a tour of various teachers' modules so you can get a sense for how teachers across last year chose to organize their materials. In the second video, it will be more of a how-to. I will show you how to add to modules and rearrange modules. So let's take a look through some teachers' modules. So in this second grade teacher's Canvas course, she chose to organize her modules by subjects. She also used some color coding emojis to aid students' navigational skills. So if I scroll down, you can see she has a module for each step subject along with a place for other technology links. If I scroll up and click on her homepage, you can see that she chose to use um, some design buttons to take her students to her modules. So for example, during reading class, if a student would click on reading, it will jump right into modules and give them some choices of what to read. Um, all of these are links that would take them to different online libraries. If I click in this next teacher's course, this also is another third grade course, she also has hers organized by modules. So she chose to put her math module at the top, a reading workshop, a writing workshop, and so on. If I click on her home page, I scroll down and you can see that she is also using buttons to navigate to modules. So if I click on the social studies button, it's going to jump right to her modules page, but it jumps right to social studies where it has resources, links, and pages, um, and even an assessment that students can access. You'll notice that some things within the module are published. There's a green check mark and other things are not. It's very easy to unpublish something that you do not want a student to access until a certain day and then publish it when you would like it to become active. This is a kindergarten teacher's page who uses buttons to take students to various websites, external websites, and students, instead of clicking on a button per subject, will click on modules and they are able to scroll and use emojis to find what they want to locate. This teacher decided to incorporate some of her epic book collections into a module of its own rather than just in reading by itself. And she's included some snap word work, some technology practice, um, alphabet practice, and even newsletters that parents can access from Canvas. This next set of modules also comes from third grade. You can see another example of organizing by subjects. And if I click on her homepage, you can see that she's designed buttons uh, to jump to those modules. So if I click on the science button, it will jump directly to that science module where she has a page that includes um, a place to put science links that kids would access. This is a fourth grade, fourth grade teacher's course that also is organizing her modules not by subject, but by topic. So when they were learning about bees, she organized all the links that they would look at within that module. If I scroll down a little bit further, you can see she's including different math activities and websites to access. She's organizing her book club for mysteries through a module in itself. She's including social studies research topics within modules as well. If I click on her home page, you'll be able to see that she is not using any buttons on her home page. Um, she has her class uh, good morning schedule on what students are going to do in the morning. And if students are going to access content, they're going to click on modules instead of a button and they're able to navigate through emojis and through the um, labeled titles. You can also see within modules that some things are unpublished and some things are published. This is a fifth grade teacher's module organization organizing different links that students will access. Um, I want to specifically point out writing resources. So when students are working on editing or going through different checklists from their Lucy Calkins unit, they're, re they're linked right here so students can access them when they need to. If I click on this teacher's homepage, you'll see that she also is not using a lot of buttons, but rather they're clicking on modules to access. Um, Epic is a popular one to have a button for so that students can click on it and jump right to Epic and enter their class code and then start reading.
Some teachers have chose to organize modules by days and including embedded slide decks. So this teacher has uh, a module for each day of the week and this icon shows you that it is a page. So if I click on Monday, it'll take just a little bit to load and you can see that she has a Google slide deck embedded. So she's updating this slide deck um, weekly so that each Monday um, they can click and they can see the, the links that they need to access throughout that day. Every module will have a next button at the bottom of it that will take you to the next section, however they're organized. So you can see if I click the next button, it will take you to her Tuesday page, which again, she has that embedded slide deck that now will say what links they need to access and what their assignment is on that Tuesday. So instead of updating within Canvas, she's updating her slide deck. If I click back on the word modules, you can, I can scroll down and see that she has a page with an embedded slide deck for each day of the week. This teacher is also using modules to organize her book clubs as well. Finally, this teacher is including modules um, by the week rather than by the day, so including dated activities. This can be specifically helpful for older children, and when you have absent students that need to access content, having it labeled by date um, can be handy. Hopefully that gives you a little overview of how you can organize your modules. In the next video, I will teach you how to link to modules and how to add material to modules. Thanks for watching. And if you saw things that you like within any of these videos, contact your tech coach. We're very willing to share resources and expertise with you. Thanks for watching.